satisfying. So bony. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any any other subjects? You know, like we we can totally move from this. Yeah, let's get away from the weather now. So we know how that affects me. <laughs> so Bodie, tell us all about yourself, about um your your your, your Twitch channel, your, your YouTube stuff. Uh, just g give us a rundown of everything Bony C. Right. That's uh gonna be pretty broad. I am definitely uh I'm a Friday streamer who loves doing a lot of different things. Been busy. Been doing it for what is it? Almost three years, actually. Anniversary is coming up August. Yeah, August. So uh, that should be good. Three years of streaming, and it's it's been a lot of different things. Initially, started out just being bored uh, at home, had a long vacation. In fact, that was yeah, that was the Bruce trip, and I got back and I didn't really have anything to do. And I was like, you know what? Let's 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 pick up streaming. I did do streaming like way back in the past, but I decided to get into it. And decided, you know what, let's give it a shot. And I started off doing Guacamelee 2 at that point, in fact. Really, uh, the game came out, didn't realize it was out because there was bad marketing. And I was like, let's play this. From that point on, I uh, made it a goal for myself at that point to play the games that I had in my library that I just bought and never played. You know the deal, right? You go into <laughs> that Steam Winter Sale, you see these amazing deals, 80% off, what? Obviously, I'm going to buy that. <gasps> that one's 70% off with all the DLC. So that's that's what I've done over the years, hoarding all these games and touching like none of them yeah. because I just end up going back to the same game over and over and over again. So I made it a goal for myself to make sure to play these games and to play these games on stream. So that's what I've been doing most of the time. Like one of the things I've been trying to keep up, um, just, just playing through these different games. And because of that, I... Um, I play a lot of different games, um, whether it's a new release that, that came out or a game that I just had in my library for ages. Um, some of the games that I really enjoy playing are Graveyard Keeper, for example. Terraria was a fun one. Mm. Uh, World of Warcraft Classic was one yeah. where I just started off right. on launch. So that was good fun. <laughs> but Sorry. <laughs> hell, I, I, uh, I really didn't enjoy Classic, though, to be fair. Um, but yeah, like as I went through it, just I actually was able to play through the games that I had in my library. Um, and while I'm not doing that as much these days anymore, it's uh, definitely one of the things that has been the mainstay. And outside of that, uh, speedrunning has been one of the big ones as well. So I uh, tend to be a lot of different worlds. Speedrunning also, you know, the games that I really, really enjoyed. Uh, I decided, you know what, I, I really want to get into the speedrunning stuff and that's pretty much the channel in a in a nutshell. Play whatever I feel like and play the games that I neglected for all these years. So essentially, you. I mean, how big is your stream library? How many games do you have? Can I ask? <laughs> like <laughs> six hundred. Okay. That I actually like registered the keys. I know I have more keys. I just simply haven't registered them in my library, oh, wow. and then I probably have some in like the Ubisoft one, and I got some in like good old games, and though not as many there. Majority definitely is on Steam, and yeah, I'd say like I'm like 600 plus. I kind of stopped myself at some point from buying more games. Yeah, I, I, I think you have to at some point, don't you? Because yeah. otherwise, I know a couple of people with stream libraries like 2,000, and it's, oh, it's, yeah, there's not enough hours in the universe. <laughs> are you gonna play them? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and one, one, one of those people has, you know, wife, kid, it's never gonna happen. It's never gonna happen. <laughs> so, basically, what you're trying to say to me is that. You started streaming because you had too many games you wanted to an excuse essentially to play them. Basically, yeah. In in some way also like this this type of accountability, I suppose, right? It's um I'm I'm sure you, you've played like some game, you got like to the halfway point and you forgot about it for some reason, because either some new game came out or some event in life or whatnot, and you just simply stop. You just stop playing it and then later on you try to go back to it because you remember, oh right, I was playing this game. Totally forget where you were left off and either you continue, you start off from the beginning because you have no clue what was going on or what the controls were, right? Um, or you just leave it there and I, like, in my head had the idea of, like, you know, like, if I'm streaming and people are watching this and they're invested, that I can't just not play them at that point, right? At, at that point, it's not just me who's enjoying it. It's mm. also 
viewers who are enjoying it. So because of that, I was like, you know, maybe maybe that's good. I I mean, I do play it somewhat loose with that. Like, if I really don't enjoy a game, then I'm not I'm not going to force myself to play it. Mm. But it does give that sense of like going through it together, right, and discovering it together. Um, and some people don't really care too much about the game, and they just want to hang out. And while others, you know, like they really care about this one game. And it's been um, interesting as well as it has allowed me to meet a lot of different people because of the different games that I play. Uh, it's interesting, uh, you know, like every single time I, I try to play a different game, I'm not really sure what's going to happen. Either people might not be interested. Um, I might, just, you know, like just regulars are coming in. Um, or there might be, I don't know, some like speed running scene around it or some like creation scene around it for mods or whatnot. And they just come in because like, <gasps> there's a new person who's playing our game. We need to go in, um, stuff like that. So pretty interesting. And true that just, I don't know, I, I kind of have gathered this group of people that all play different games, yet they all, you know, hang out of my stream. That's fantastic. Amazing. I mean, that does kind of um, slide into my next question, which was really like, have you ever had a game that you've just really not enjoyed? So you have just been like, I'm not playing that anymore. Or we're moving on to another game. Uh, I, I'd say like two, like uh, for two, like very different reasons. One would be Borderlands 2, simply mm. due to how involved people want to be with it. Oh my God. They really want to join in. in they moment. really want to be playing along. <laughs> yeah. And. It like initially I was like you know whatever you know like I'll just let like one person in just to see how it goes and yeah. they were like hacking weapons and whatnot because that's what they enjoyed doing and they gave me these weapons that are like super OP and mm. I'm like well, I don't I don't, don't want to be doing this yeah. it's also very difficult because you know it comes from a place where people just want to help because they're like oh, I can help this person out beat this game and I'm like this is not how I want to play this game yeah at all so that you know like kind of put a damper on it but later on just the the way the game is structured and how it somewhat forces you to do side quests you can't really follow the main quest and expect to beat the game because you will get your ass kicked yeah yeah uh, <laughs> so that made it a bit less but i'd say that the other one uh would be jackbox and that's mainly due due to harassment that came yeah. out of it it's very easy for people Pros. that you know like that like trolling yeah. oh yeah no i uh definitely like it it it's not fun when I am just busy moderating yep. what people are writing in the game. Yeah, uh, it's understandable. So that was uh, really, uh, really unfortunate. Because I really enjoyed Jackbox. I still enjoy like playing it with like friends or whatnot, just not on stream. Yeah, oh, fair enough. Have you ever had a game then that you've really enjoyed, but your community has just been like, nah? <laughs> um, I suppose, I mean, many. I find the randomizers to be somewhat of a of a tricky one and specifically like rpgs is one of those things that don't really seem to connect too much mm. so like witcher 3 people didn't really reconnect to it um but like final fantasy 4 randomizer is one that i really enjoy a lot um there's like tournaments around this one i i, I watch those and whatnot um but I'm not sure if it's due to people being unfamiliar with the game itself and the randomizer expecting you to have this knowledge of mm -hmm. the game. It's, I don't know, it's it's one of those where I always find that, you know, like, people don't really know what to do with it. They don't really know what to expect with it, even though I really want to play it. Um, they're just like, eh. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing it's not I've, really connecting. Yeah, one thing I've, I've kind of observed about randomizers, because I do um, Ocarina randomizers quite a lot, is um, they've got their own kind of community and they very much stick together. Yeah. But I think a, a reason for that is, um, from the outside perspective, someone doing a randomizer, half the time nobody has any idea what the hell is going on. And it's, it's actually quite Definitely. difficult to explain it as well. Like, if you're playing a game normally and someone doesn't know what's going on, you can kind of explain what's going on. You can explain, you know, the, the, the mechanics of the game, what's happened so far in the story. You can't, like, actually trying to explain a randomizer to someone who's completely new is, is, even someone who knows the game, it's completely an exercise in futility. So you either know what's going on or you kind of don't. And generally, yeah. if people don't know what's going on, they're probably going to dip most of the time. Um, and then, but, but then you get the people that do. And they, again, they stick together and, and all that kind of yeah, thing. I yeah. think that's probably, yeah. So it, it, I think with randomizers, a lot of thing that a lot of people do i find especially with ocarina randomizers is that will be their thing and that will be the thing that they do and then they'll get a community surrounding that 
kind of thing. But it from the outside, if you if you're doing what you do and what we do, which is, you know, variety streaming, if you then try a randomizer, right. everyone that would normally show up to your stream is like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and it becomes yeah, it very just difficult. doesn't jive at all. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's unfortunate, definitely. As yeah, as you say, it's uh, it's it's that recognizing what is going on. Like, I, there's always those few that don't really care, right? They don't care what about, about what's going on on screen. They just want to hang out with you. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's still that group that just no clue what to do with this. I'm just gonna go and check out something else. So uh, it's it's unfortunate, right? And definitely, as you say, I think if that was the only thing I was doing, totally fine. It's um. There are definitely some some play people that stream randomizers and they're you know they're massive and they're doing great, but that's because that's what they do. That yeah. is what they're known for, and they just have that that community. Absolutely. Yeah, go on, Harry. Please. Yes, you in the back. <laughs> so, as a person who doesn't really do speed running, I have the stupid noob question of what constitute a randomizer? What what do you do? Is it is right. it mob changes? Is it like? Like that, 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 that... missing or it's a good question. <laughs> you can I, go don't, pretty I, don't, wide. I don't do yeah, speed no. runs, so I, I ain't got a clue. You, you guys can say randomize, and I'd be like, okay, so what? They got pink hair now. A, okay, a cool. speed run yeah. normally is just playing the normal game, not like, but quickly, right? Yeah, like correct me if I'm wrong here, for example. But, but with like... a randomizer, like items are actually in random places, and therefore you can't, you have to sequence break the game as well in order to complete okay. it. And it's, you don't have to do you can you can do them both at the same time. You can you can speed run. A randomizer, or you can just play a randomizer at your own pace, can't you? Basically, so it's literally yeah. just like like items in the game are in different locations to what they would normally be. It's not like a mob stats have changed or anything like that. Yep. Then, I mean, it's in general, yeah, that's the base. I, it, I do know um, Legend of Zelda: A Link to the Past, for example. That's mm. one that I play as well. It's yeah, it's pretty broad. Like you can change the way your sprite looks. You can change the way where enemies are placed, the way rooms are linked to one another. You can go insanely far in terms of random, you know how random things are. But in general, it it is the item part. Yeah. And, um, um, okay. But I also know in like Pokemon uh, randomizers, you they they can have random stats if you choose them to do so as well. Uh, random typings and that. So you could have I don't know a Bulbasaur that knows only fire moves and is weak to water. Oh, okay. Right. Fair play. Yeah. So uh, you can so, basically randomize anything, as far as I, I know, as long as it works for the person playing the game. Basically, yeah. I, I do feel whenever a random a game is randomized, it usually comes from people who really enjoy speedrunning this game, but want to, you know, play it from a different angle. Mm -hmm. um, like, definitely the Zelda series is one of those that just lends itself very well to it, yeah. due to the fact that the world in and of itself is pretty open, but there are usually things that gate it, right? You need a hammer to get past this one part, or you need a hook shot to get past this other part. But they're not in static locations. It's not you go from level 1 to level 2 to level 3, and you just need this power-up every single time. Um, it's just in the world. Mm. And it, it makes that, oh, now I have a hook shot and this item, and now that means I can already get here um, because I have the items that are required for it. Enemies may be more difficult and whatnot, right? And it allows for this extra challenge to people who are used to playing this game and use this knowledge uh, in, you know, like unconventional ways. You might even figure out like, oh, I never realized this worked, um, right? This, uh, this one okay. silly thing in... Link to the past. There's like the best sword in the uh, in the game. Mm. Um, actually, does one damage to a certain boss because it's like a way earlier boss, and you're not supposed to get that sword after like yeah. the sixth dungeon normally. So it's like a weird interaction that you know people realize. Oh, okay, I sh I should take into account. Apparently, this is some some thing going on. It's pretty interesting, especially yeah. when old games have these weird bugs. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. I think you hit on something there as well. I mean, we'll talk a lot more about speedrunning uh, a little bit later, but um, the thing with speedrunning uh, a game is it's incredibly repetitive because you're playing the same yeah. game again and again and again. And especially when you're getting very good at it, you're not just playing the same game, but you're playing it exactly the same way every single time. And it does become incredibly repetitive. So I can completely understand why um, speedrunners would want to mix it up, basically, with things like randomizers. Um, and they're brilliant. They, they really breathe, bring, like, they breathe life into games that, even though they're amazing, do get repetitive because you keep playing them again and again. Even if you're not speedrunning, like before, I'd never speedrun um, uh, 
Legend of uh, Ocarina of Time, but I'd still played it like 50 times be- like before I even heard of what a randomizer was. So um, it's it just, it really breathes a lot of life into, into a game, doesn't it? But like we were saying earlier, the, the audience needs to know what the hell is going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't Amazing. know the base game, don't even bother. Like, you're just going to get super confused. Exactly, exactly. So um, flipping that on its head then, have you ever had a game that you've not really enjoyed, but your community have absolutely loved, and maybe they keep asking you to go back to it, and you're just like, nah, I don't think I will. <laughs> um not in particular no usually it's uh i suppose in the speedrunning realm of things right where um you know as i am playing this this, this game over and over and over again at some point i'm going to lose interest at mm-hmm. some point it's just not really that that you know that fun anymore and i uh, it's 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 more in that where i'm like okay i'm like really done with this game but people really want to watch this game because you always you know you have these fans of the speedruns and they just love watching speedruns mm. um so mostly due to that but in general i uh i don't find people clamor for you know games returning in in that sense um I, I do get suggestions, right, for games to play, but not per se like, oh, you played this game, you have to replay this game over and over and over again. Mm. So, um, like the 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 feedback that I have gotten from the the people that I've you know like that, that I've talked to, um, just like when they're like, oh, what is it that you like? Is you know like knowing that I they could tune in and it could be some game they've never heard of, and I mean they might enjoy it, they might not, but they like the idea of it being they've never heard of yeah so i i find myself looking for games as well to you know like scratch that itch because i want to do that as well amazing mm. so right at the beginning you did mention names bony c not bony m <laughs> where does your name <laughs> come from um it's uh pretty old at this point it's in the back in the day i remember <laughs> back in I the day like, it was day. 1996 or something like that. i don't i don't quite remember the year i was like seven i want i want to say like seven years old maybe eight yeah and i you know at the time i was on uh was a vacation at my uh, aunt's place and like a couple of my nephews were there as well and we we're just you know just hanging out playing you know like playing outside watching shows and whatnot and at some point we were i don't know watching what was it again um it was like the show with the like beetle transforming not beetlejuice but like beetle transform was like three of them it was in the age where like power rangers was like a, an amazing thing something like animorphs uh, or something like that Something along those lines, but there were like three of them in this case, and they just, I think it was something with Beetle. I don't quite remember it. Um, but there was one of the, like, they, they all had nicknames, and that's that's what stuck. Um, and we were like, wow, that's amazing. We really need to give each other nicknames. And so Beetle works. Thank you. Um, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> and so we just, you know, we spent this summer um you know just coming up with different nicknames and you know like oh we'll try this and then maybe that'll fade out a couple days later and we'll try this and the one that really stuck for me at least was bony um and so that was kind of the name that i adopted and i kept like at some point i moved to uh the hometown i live in right now uh initially i was born in the hague and lived there um and then move to where i live now i can tell you the style name but you wouldn't know where to, where it is so mm. i'm not even gonna mm, right. uh, <laughs> but like i actually got there and you know like my uh one of my friends that already knew uh, lived there already and he apparently already induced introduced people uh, you know like me two people as bony like <laughs> i actually like just got there and like hey are you bony i'm like what the <laughs> i'm like 11 at that point and but it just stuck right it's one of those things that just kept on sticking and the c part came in like way like kind of later when i got into mmos and i needed to put in the last name for mmo i don't even remember which one like something with ruby yeah i had to i had to, had to put in the last name and i was like gotta do something so i came up with crystal that was the one i i i had i was like you know what crystal bony crystal sounds great yeah. let's do it and later i just got rid of the crystal part and just kept the c because everyone takes the name bony 
Oh well, yeah, so, I, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so no, I yeah, it's it's been one of those just kind of stuck with me. I'm I'm so used to people just either calling me Boney or you know my real name though. Plenty of people in real life just call me Boney as well. <laughs> it's, it's just good. one of those things. It's like in it's work, good. right? People yeah. will call me by my actual name, which is Ryan. Um, but yeah. Oh, good times. It's nice, isn't it, when you meet people in real life and they call you by your online name? It's, it's yeah. kind of nice, isn't it? I don't, when I went to China, so my wife introduced me to her friends as Melar. I was like, yeah, that works hey. for me. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Awesome. So, um, Tell us a little bit about like sort of what's coming up in the near future on on uh, on your YouTube channel. Give us a scoop. Um, yeah. So lately, I've um, been busy with well commentary. Really, I suppose that's been the main thing. I I haven't been as active as I would like to um, due to you know like just real life getting in the way. Busy with. Um, quitting my job and whatnot. So I, I got to focus a bit more on that than I can on the, the streaming side. But when when I am busy with streaming, it's been mostly Trackmania these days and doing commentary on uh, on tournaments. So I initially did the Finnish Trackmania League, uh, which is on, uh, on my YouTube and whatnot, and uh, just having about 17 Finnish players and uh, just trying to figure out who was the best. There was no price or whatnot, just just some Finnish players who really enjoy playing Trackmania, and some of them are just, you know, like, they're great players, while others are just in it because they just want to be involved. Yeah. But it, uh, it's been one of those things that I just had in the back of my head, like, oh, yeah, doing commentary seems fun. Like, maybe, like, Tetris or doing, like, one of these speedrunning tournaments, just something that I was like, oh, yeah, this seems like fun. Um, and it was just true. One of my viewers, Knight, who was like, hey, I'm, I'm setting this up, right? So do you want to do some commentary? So I did. <laughs> and I really enjoyed it. And I got into contact with some other people who were like, hey, I'm setting up a tournament. Do you want to commentate? I'm like, sure. <laughs> nice. And so true that I kind of, you know, like I'm in the commentary loop. And now there is a, another tournament happening starting tomorrow. Um, and I'll be doing commentary for that as well. Fantastic. So that's uh, good stuff. Do you think you might do um, casting or commentary for any other games in the near future? Or is it just Trackmania at the moment? If I could, yeah. Like, the, the games that I would love to commentate would be, like, well, Tetris is, is one. Uh, probably classic Tetris, as modern Tetris I'm not, like, that familiar with in terms of um, the knowledge side. Mm. Um, and StarCraft 2. And that's mainly because StarCraft 2 is, like, yeah, I've pretty much played that since it released, and I've been watching the the esports scene ever since that you know like was going on. And I I do take a lot from those commentators as well in mm. in my commentary because I've just seen so much of it. And like, there's a couple that are you know they're my favorites. So obviously, I'm gonna draw from them to absolutely try and somewhat emulate what they do and try to see what they do right and try to bring that in mind. Yeah, Starcraft Three. That's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen you stream that. Have you? Yeah, I uh, actually. Uh, did like I did stream it like once or twice, but there are two reasons why I just didn't. One, I just can't read chat because right. it's way <laughs> too involved. Right. Um, and I just was super duper rusty, and I was like, do I really want to learn everything about the game again and get the muscle memory back again and whatnot? And I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm good. I'm good. It's um uh, like something I was like really chasing, like 2010. And I was I like see. really trying to get into tournaments and really trying to get better and whatnot, but I, I I never really you know got that far. I just I did get into some tournaments, but I got knocked out like round one, round two, stuff like that. Interesting. That's actually very interesting. I don't think I've ever seen anyone stream uh, uh, StarCraft two. Uh, but the one thing I always say about um, Overwatch, I've said it so many times, is mm. it, although it's it's a good game. I don't think it's a great yeah. game to stream because you can't interact with chat while you're playing it. Yeah. And I've tried so many times, because I've never played it, but um, I've, tr um, I've tried so many times to interact with people that I know are interactable with chat, like with interact with chat, but when they're playing uh, Overwatch, they just don't. And I'm guessing yeah. then that um, Star StarCraft 2 must be a similar kind of gig. And if you can't interact with chat, and how long is a game? Like, what, 15, 20 minutes? That's going to be a nightmare Something like stream, that. Isn't it? Yeah, like it's it's definitely uh, and and it just takes up so much concentration as well. Yeah, I, I can't like it, at the start it might be a bit slow and you're able to 
chat for a little bit because you're just building up your economy. But once you know things get rolling, yeah, there's no way you can you can you can focus on chat. You might be able to glance like a word or two. Yeah. But that's that's it. Yeah, that's probably why I always sucked at those kind of games because I've I've <laughs> always found time to be able to do that kind of thing. But that's probably why I'm rubbish at it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good times. It's, it's, it's hard. Yeah, it's, it's hard, though. Like, I still um, like I still watch, right? And I still understand what's going on and whatnot. But to actually play again, man, I just... Yeah. I, I, I'll just watch. It's fine. You know, you want to do 300 actions per minute? Be my guest. I... No more. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's understandable. You do get that sometimes. Though. That's one of the things I have with Dota, too. I got quite into right. that at one point. I'm not anymore, but I, I did get quite into it. But the games just last too freaking long. Oh, yeah. Like, you're looking at, like, if you're really lucky, like, a really quick game is, what, like, 25 minutes. But quite often they last, Probably, yeah. on average, about 40 to 45 minutes. But you can easily get into a game that lasts, like, an hour, hour and a half. You cannot leave. You cannot leave a game. Nope. You, get, <laughs> you, you get really harshly penalized, and rightly so, for leaving a game early. So you have to make sure that you've got that time handy before you start playing. It just it doesn't work for anyone that's got like any responsibilities at all. So I, end, I ended up watching the pro stuff on uh, uh, on um, on Twitch and, and YouTube in the end. Um, but I, I kind of got a bit bored in the end. I mean, you do, don't you? After yeah, I mean, it, it it makes sense, right? At some point, it's the jig is up. I feel like there's there's I at, at least for me as I've been getting older, I find. You know, like a game can't really hold my interest as much anymore as it did when I when I was mm. younger, where I could just keep going and going and going. I might be like really into a game when it just comes out. Uh, like Valheim was one where I was just like, oh yeah, let's keep playing and playing and playing. And I'm like, oh, it's already been like eight hours of yeah. playing. Oh, <laughs> I I just built a house. What what are you talking about? Yeah, <laughs> you just don't realize, right? <laughs> but that fades pretty pretty fast for me uh, these days. yeah yeah retention is difficult as you get older yeah, yeah definitely well I, I found um with uh, like esports in general like especially when i was trying like, experiencing dota 2 um you know watching the, uh, the the professionals do it is like you'd get used to watching a certain meta and you don't you'd get you'd start getting the hang of like who was in what team and and how certain right. teams work and and you'd, you'd start to understand the, the like the whole sort of um the, the whole sort of ecosystem as it were but then the big tournament would end and everything would change. <laughs> everything. Like, not just the matter of the game, but, like, all of the players would all switch which, which team they were in. It's like transfer season, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And my, my mate would keep up with it but, and it, it'd tell me, he'd be like, oh, this person's in this, uh, uh, this uh, team now. And i just end up getting completely confused and be like, I, 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 I started trying to just follow one team. And it, I couldn't even manage that in the end. I was just like, you know what, forget it. <laughs> it's too much for my my, uh, my <laughs> aging brain to handle. <laughs> uh, just watch StarCraft 2. They just play solo all the time. You don't even need to worry, you can't need to worry about on. teams. Just, just, just this one player? <laughs> Sweet. Though, be, like, if it is a Korean player, there is a chance that they have to go for mandatory military training. So, yeah. you're really a fan of this one Korean player, be prepared to not be able to cheer for like a couple years yeah yeah it's like two years isn't it yeah yeah uh, koreans aren't the only uh, uh only country that still do that i, I vaguely remember there's, yeah, there's there, still some yeah. there's a couple of um european countries i think that still do that because i remember hearing about someone who had to who got drafted mm. yeah it's mad really when you think about it i mean technically the draft is still a thing here in the netherlands it's just you know like on pause yeah <laughs> it's one of those things like if they would like if there's like any need for it they could reinstate it but yeah yeah so um let's talk a little bit you mentioned you sort of alluded to it very very lightly earlier but um today's kind of a special day in a way isn't it because you you finished your job you've been there for nine years right yeah <laughs> you, you, today was literally your last day and you you, ca you yep. came home essentially and, and 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 did this so um talk a little bit about what does that feel like because i've I've never been in a job that long. <laughs> How does it feel like to be in a job that long and then leave? Like, what, what have you got an, another job lined up or? Um, I mean, I suppose to start at the start. Yeah, it's, it's been like nine years, nine, nine and a half years, something like that. And yeah, it's, it's definitely odd. And it's been my first real employer, right? Before that, I had like, you know, like uh, to deliver papers and like, uh, what is it? Pick tomatoes and whatnot stuff like that right yeah. um as you're growing up but this was like my first job going out like getting out of college and 
initially just getting into it, it was supposed to be a temp job for like two to three months. Mm. And, you know, I just, I just kind of stuck because, it just, you know, it was working out and there was plenty of work to be done and whatnot. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. Like at some point you just, you just, you know, it's, it's like the new normal, you get into it, you, you, you know, you interact with these people. And initially the first couple of years, um, department I was in, I wasn't necessarily that, you know, like that much into it. And I was trying to still like trying to find somewhere else to work. Um, but eventually got into a different department and just, you know, had some just great colleagues, great people to, to work with. And we kind of had a shit year, but in terms of like what was going on with the company and everyone rallied, everyone just went, everyone worked at it. Nobody was like, oh, you know what, never mind. I'm just done with it. And everybody just walks out. No, like everybody was trying to help each other out and really working with each other. And I feel like at that point, um, it was like, we're doing this. It's us right here. And, and we're going to make this happen. And it's like the somewhat camaraderie of sorts. It's, it's, it's really what made me stick around as much just building this, this thing together. Um, and I've, that's basically what I've done most of the time there. Like I spent like six years on that because it's like, there's like different brands and we were all a small department on one brand. So it's like, it's a small company and everybody knows each other and everybody has their own responsibilities, but you're helping out each other and whatnot. Um, and yeah, it's just like, you're just building up this, this, this thing, even though, you know, it's part of a bigger company and whatnot. Um, it's still, you know, you are seeing what you've put into it. And I really, really enjoyed all that. And it, it really made me stick and true changes that have been going on that's been fading and going away and i'm i for myself was like you know what i think i've i've you know like been able to do what i really wanted to do here and decided you know what i think i think it's time to go i think it's time to really go and try something new and find something new so it's, it's very odd to now just say you know what i am actually done done like i i closed my laptop shut it down and I was like, I'm going to put this on my desk for like, no, no, I'm not. I put it away. I just like, it's not on my desk anymore. It's just not there. I have no reason to put it back there anymore. Um, it's somewhat weird. It hasn't landed because mm. I'm not at the office. I'm not seeing all these people. I'm not like constantly talking to people like, yeah, I'm leaving. Right. And all that. Cause it's all digital. So in that sense, it hasn't really clicked. Right. Mm. I know, but. I don't know, no. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 definitely uh, weird. Just like as I am, you know, I'm starting to slowly realize over time. Like, yeah, no, I'm actually done. I'm actually done, done. And who knows? Maybe in the future I'll go back. But I really, you know, I won't really want to try something new. Really want to see something new, meet some new people and whatnot. It's it's um, it's weird, right? It's a decade of my life yeah. to some degree. <laughs> I had a hell of a long time. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it's it's gonna be uh, very very weird. Do you do you have something else lined up, or are you just gonna be looking? not at the moment? No, like it's been uh, one of the things that I've been doing this past year is really trying to figure out what it is I really want to do. What what is what drives me? What what makes me wake up in the morning? Um, so I I really tried to discover that last year and and really tried to you know like dig into like the core of it. Um, which for me is like just just solving technical issues. If I can make sure I can solve these technical issues and make things easier for someone, I'm happy. I'm good. I'm golden. Um, and I just try to manifest that into some skill set, right? Something that allows me to actually provide that. And while I already have, you know, like a, a skill set built up through, you know, just just my job and whatnot, um, which most of it is like um, managing uh, our website and building pages and whatnot, but also taking care of uh, specific data for products and, and, and such that, you know, you have to be pretty precise. You can't just mess up uh, <laughs> making something 10 euros instead of 100 euros because you accidentally, you know, messed up the, the dot. You don't want to deal with that. You don't want to deal with that, especially when it costs people money. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, like I, I just, you know, I've built that. But I was like, you know, let's make this really something that I can work towards and aim towards. So it was true. Um, a fellow speedrunner 
Um, he hasn't been streaming as much anymore due to internet stuff. But he was like, hey, go try out like Salesforce. That is the one specific thing that I've been working on this this past almost a year. Hmm. Um, because of his suggestion, he's been doing that, you know, for quite some time. He was like, you can really, you know, make this happen through that. So I'm really just you know, like I've been at it now ten months. I want to say got like a couple certificates as well, and just really trying to hope, like just convincing someone to be like, just take me in. I know I haven't done shit with the program, mm. but I've done a ton of other stuff, and I've been getting these things. So you know, like please hire me. I suppose that's that's pretty much what uh I've been working on. And I have had some great com you know like conversations and interviews and whatnot. Just mm. not quite there yet. Okay. Well, have you, for example? Mm -hmm. considered full-time streaming mm. <laughs> interesting interesting mentioning this mm. you like that no um definitely due to you know like having some time off i have in the past like one of the things i've done mm. last year june i was like i'm streaming every single day period like i, I was like giving away codes as well because i mm. again i'm very good at buying games uh, and never playing them and I had a ton of coats. <laughs> so that's what I did like through the entire month of June last year and just streaming every day, playing games, setting up the schedules and whatnot, right? And um, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, though it's it's very involved to do while working, right? Because yeah. I'm just like, I'm at work, working eight, and a, eight, eight, nine hours, depends on what's going on, get a bite to eat, maybe take care of some stuff in, in the house, then into streaming i go at the time i was also trying to also like get some youtube videos done no way mm -hmm. like there's just <laughs> not enough time in the day to do any of that but now that i you know i have about i mean technically i have seven weeks that i'm still you know like within my contract but i have time off because i just just have that much time off and then after that i have an even longer vacation i suppose <laughs> in some ways right it depends on how you're are you thinking about it? Um, but yeah, like I, I, I do want to like try it, you know, try dabbling in it again. I found that over the years, I initially started like, oh, I really want to grow, get more viewers and whatnot, and really, really get into the grind, as people mm -hmm. like to call it. Yeah. Whereas these days, I'm more like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with what I'm doing, where I'm getting. I, I enjoy all the people who are coming in, and I'm not necessarily as focused anymore on the numbers. Um, like obviously, I, 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 it would suck if I just I've been streaming for like three hours and there's like one person. I'm like, oh man, yeah. I do want to provide some value. Uh, it's yeah. simply someone, you know, one of those things where I'm like, eh, oh, I, I just viewer counts hidden and like after stream, I might be like, oh, well, maybe, maybe see who was who was watching, and <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty much it. But I'm very curious now that I have all this time off to see, um, like try my hand at like afternoon streaming. I, I. I always had to stream at night because yeah. of work but i'm very mm -hmm. curious like you know what happens if i stream during the afternoon i i it's, it's more convenient for me right just allow that to be a placeholder of the schedule and the routine that i normally have yeah um but yeah like one of the things i really need to figure out as well is like what exactly do i want to stream as well yeah. um though there are some games that i've been looking at are like ooh, that, that might be a good one phantom Abyss, I believe, is one that is coming up. It looks very good. Mm, wicked. All right. Um, well, I did want to go a little bit into because obviously the the topic today is all about speed running. Yeah. Uh, but um, obviously that would be more about you know the the the, the merits and demerits of it and all this kind of thing. Uh, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit in this segment about sort of your speed running, the fact that you can, obviously you do a fair amount yeah. of it. Uh, I've definitely seen you speed run um, Spyro, uh, mm -hmm. and also um, I think correct me if I'm wrong, but you you got the world record on Super Cable Boy, didn't you? I have, but at the moment I'm second. Somebody did beat me. Someone beat you, <laughs> but you did actually get the world record live yeah, on yeah, yeah. ESL, didn't you? Which is is that yeah. right? That was that was yeah. amazing. No, kind of, kind of. To be, you know, like don't don't tell them that a new patch came out and that caused timings to be like super super duper favorable. But no, definitely I did do, I did do that technically. <laughs> That's a cool thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's 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 I, I still have like one world record, but I mean nobody really plays the game anymore. So I'm like, nice, got that one. No one is gonna beat me on that. 
unless for some reason people decide to go back to it. But. Yeah. So what game? <laughs> what games have you? Do you speed run or have you speed run? Um. So so far, I I initially like when I got into speed running was like the whole AGQ stuff, and I started playing uh, Maui Mallard in Cold Shadow. That was uh, one of my childhood games. And I was like, nobody's really playing this. And I'm like, oh, I, I got to speed run this. So I played that for a bit. That's like one of the first VODs that is on my channel still. So that's, that's pretty funny. I never submitted the record, right, that I have, but still there. Um, but no, in terms of like really actively like speed running them and also posting them, I, I've done Guacamelee and Guacamelee 2, which are um, Metroidvania with a beat em up style because you're playing a uh, luchador so you're you know <laughs> you're punching you're grappling them right ball driving them and whatnot um with you know a bunch of platforming just mixed into it spyro as you mentioned um played that a bunch i uh, was actually you know like also able to showcase that one at uh, the european speedrunners assembly so that was really good um the randomizers, right? Although randomizers, you can't really post them. Um, Final Fantasy IV and A Link to the Past. Those are two that I really, really enjoyed. And I have tried like my hands at like some other games, but I would say like the other game would be and the most recent Super Cable Boy. Yeah, it's one of those games that I I came across during one of the Steam Indie Festivals. Mm. And I was like, oh, you know, like this seems like a, a pretty fun game. And, you know, like maybe maybe this will be uh, fun to, to speedrun. Uh, you know, I really fell in love with the game. Um, it's got a great soundtrack, is... isn't it? Oh, yeah. No, I, I definitely love it. I'm still like really just hoping um, Sorb, the uh, developer of the game, is going to be able to release the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> he's been running into some issues, I know, but I really hope he's going to release that because it's just such a, I don't know, it's such a nice soundtrack. Um, but the game in its whole, I just really, really adore um, some of the sound effects and whatnot. And it's um, it's a fun community as well. I do want to get back into it and try to reclaim my record, <laughs> but I might I might do over these next couple of weeks. Just haven't really had the time to get into it with yeah. all the Trackmania stuff and work stuff happening. No, fair enough. That's cool. Um, so um, see YouTube. We've mentioned again. You very briefly alluded to this, and it's it's yes. one of the uh, it's one of the three uh, socials that are uh, that's coming up on the timers, and that will be uh, available in the description below on YouTube. Uh, what kind of stuff do you normally put up on YouTube? Um, so mainly, I I put up right the speed run records that I have uh, achieved. Just upload those on on the YouTube's. Uh, which, you know, I got to make sure, like, if I get a new on record, the, I got to edit the old one. On the YouTubes. Uh, okay, Boomer. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, the um, whenever I'm able to just put up the, the cast that I have been able to do from the tournaments, um, so the FTL specifically, I've been able to upload all of them. Um, and hopefully in the future, I'll be able to do that for other tournaments as well. Um, I've also done a couple of first look videos where I just bought a game, you know, like that seemed interesting to me um, that came out recently and uh, play it for like, you know, like, uh, like 30, 45 minutes, really get a first impression of what is going on, what the game is about and whether or not it's, you know, it's any fun. And I, it's not like I give any ratings or whatnot. It's, you know, just generally looking at, okay, these are the mechanics. So this is working in this way. Oh, this could be interesting. Cause at the end of the day, it, with about like half an hour, you're not going to get everything. You're not getting the, the full, full, you know, like full gist. You might not know, like maybe there's some type of rotation uh, within its uh, gameplay core that might get boring after like a few tries, but it could be amazing. You just keep playing over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's one of those things that uh, is a bit of an extension of playing through these games. Um, people tend to look at the games that I play and like, oh, this is fun. I'm going to try it out myself. And I feel like the first look um videos uh lend to that as well and uh, allow people to hopefully feel the same way and at the same time i'm like it's it's one of those videos that i try to make in a way like oh you could watch this and fall asleep to it just nice. you know just chill relax <laughs> take it easy fantastic well um i really gotta say like um i, I really um appreciate and i i admire um the way that um because you know, it's, it's a bit of a buzzword isn't it? a variety streamer 
And a lot of people use it. I mean, even I say it, but I, I don't think I've got the greatest variety in the world. I think a lot of people don't. But when you really do have a lot of variety when it comes to, because it's, it's not just different games that you play and you will also play games that I like a lot of people have never heard of. It's also yeah. obviously the fact that, you know, you might play a game blind or, um, or, you know, so you start speed running or you'll, you just start casting something like uh, all of this kind of thing. It's, it's, it seems really random, but uh, uh, also the fact that you seem to be really good at everything as well, which is <laughs> immensely annoying for someone like me, <laughs> but also I really look up to it. So uh, seriously, like I would, I would say, uh, if you want to watch someone who's actually like a good streamer and that they, you know, they talk to chat and they have things available for chat, but it's actually pretty damn good at the game. Follow Boney C. Amazing. Um, Hippo, do you have any questions before we move on to segment two? No, no, no. I've, I, I've, to be fair, I've gone into one of those modes where I'm just quite fascinated and just want to listen all day long and not fall asleep, by the way. Okay, just throwing it out <laughs> there. I mean, I wouldn't mind falling I mean, asleep could, at some point, you know, but I, I, I'll watch the YouTubes for that. It's fine. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy. Relax. Breathe in. No, just, I just make nice sure because you you've got such a passion for the speed running thing. It's nice to see someone talk positively about it and enthusiastic about it. It's uh, again from my perspective, I, I don't really do speed runs. My my idea of speed running is making sure I have a poo really quickly. That's my <laughs> speed running tactic. You know what I mean? If I can get it done within a minute without having to get my TikTok out, I'm happy. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> uh, that's my situation. Speed running. So I've never really done speed running games, and it's just. And like I said, I, uh, I, I think I said it before we started live that, you know, I've watched like the Minecraft ones on the other occasions, stuff like that, because I go through the circulation, it comes up on the field and go, oh, I love look at that. And I'm thinking, how the hell do you even do that? Hmm. And I remember one of my first times seeing your stream, because I tend to lurk in people's streams when they're like potentially coming up or Mel right. mentions them and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, okay, oh, have a look at them now. <laughs> Ooh, and then I kind of fell in love and you were playing Spyro. And I was like, I remember Spyro when I was younger. I didn't do anything like this. What's good? I think I just killed some sheep and burnt them alive, and I thought I completed the game, and I probably hadn't even left the zone to start off in. You know, it was that kind of. But you're like, you're like, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm afraid of your power with Spyro. Okay, but no, I, I, I just generally love. I just lo I love people with their enthusiasm for something they really enjoy. It's just, it's it's really refreshing, especially in a an, an industry that a lot of people get drained from. Mm. It's nice to see right. that you still it, it rejuvenates you and keeps you going. It's yeah. it's nice to see. It really the enthusiasm is. Enthusiasm is really catching as well, isn't it? Plus, yeah, you have a lovely smile. Fun. I love your smile. <laughs> it's you. adorable. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right i mean you know like lights are already going off here i already got the kind of lights going you know this is all yeah, right. yeah yeah yeah. i mean i was gonna get the clapper going see if it works but it's okay <laughs> this is my like this is my trick to make sure my afro looks extra fluffy right just make the room dark and people are like how big is your afro and i'm like to be honest in, the, in this light place, yeah. yeah the afro look kind of looks like the void it's just disappearing into the yeah. background <laughs> consider yourself Satisfied. <laughs>